Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. You know, right in the middle of another only vaguely related project, I got the urge to paint a quick seascape. If you're a watercolour artist, these sort of urges have to be acted upon and quickly before it goes away. What emerged was a swift seascape, slightly rough at the edges, not something I'd want to frame up and hang on the wall, but a painting in which I realised I had used three different methods for reclaiming highlights. Lifting out, scrubbing with sandpaper and scratching with a knife. Here's how it all happened. I like to encourage students to experiment. And to those who are completely new to watercolour, I always say that they should try and learn to love the process of painting and not worry about the results. They will come later after you've practised a bit. The fact is, painting in watercolour is an organic process, fraught with unexpected surprises and unpredictabilities. If you love the process, then none of that should matter. The idea for this painting came almost out of the blue. Literally, in fact, truth be told, I'd been working with a lot of blues and greys and greens, and I really fancied painting something warm. So this is a wet in wet wash, consisting of my three favourite go-to warm colours cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and topped off with just a hint of French ultramarine. Yes, I know, ultramarine isn't a warm colour, but I still needed something to cool down the outer edges. Hopefully, you'll see what I mean. The point is, I have an image in my mind of waves crashing upon a rocky coastline with the sun setting on the horizon and illuminating the body of the waves. Now, there are lots of different ways to create a crashing wave. On this occasion, I've decided to simply lift the spray out with a scrunched up piece of tissue. The important thing to remember is that lifting out doesn't always have to be done with a maximum amount of pressure. You can control the effect and create more subtle highlights by going a little easier on it. It was at this point that I realised I hadn't really thought things through and I didn't have much of a plan. I knew that I wanted to keep the warmth going, which meant reusing the cadmium yellow and cadmium red again. I also found myself relying upon one of the simple rules of watercolour. I say rule, yet there isn't actually a rule book. But one of the things we do have to remember in watercolour is that we work from light to dark. With that in mind, my general advice is, if in doubt, keep it light and keep things light for as long as possible. So what I'm doing now is tentatively drawing out the wave with the brush and reusing those three initial colours. Which brings me to another piece of advice, which is that as a general rule, it's a good idea to try and keep the number of colours down to a minimum and, in fact, recycle colours wherever possible. Having established the general layout of my wave, I was keen to start building things up right away. For this, I've mixed French ultramarine and burnt umber together with just a tiny hint of alizarin crimson for subtle warmth. I've placed it against the lifted out spray in order to increase the contrast 
But then I'm also softening it off back into the body of the wave in order to blend it in and make it hopefully look like it's all an integral part of it. In fact, I can use this mix in several ways. As the wave rolls over and the sun shines through it, the random lines of foam that are carried with it will look dark when lit from behind. The other area in which I want to use this mix is along the leading edge of the crashing wave. Naturally, I need to leave it mostly white, but to reinforce its three dimensional properties, I also need to apply some shadow to it. To inject drama into my scene, I'm going to add some rocks. Of this, I'm using a dark, rich mix of burnt umber, to which I'm adding French ultramarine for variation. The biggest challenge here is to make the rocks look like they are appearing sporadically through the breaking waves and rising up from the water instead of sitting on top of it. There are a couple of different ways to address that challenge. First off, I'm dabbing at the rocks along their bottom edge while they're still damp to extend the illusion of rising spray. Also, I've curved the bottom line of the rocks to suggest that curved shape of the sea in a negative painting sort of way. Beyond the immediate foreground, other waves are relentlessly rolling in. To suggest these, I'm reusing the warm colours I used earlier. Cadmium red and cadmium yellow, and still with a hint of French ultramarine to weigh them down. Well, I'll be honest, I'm still making it up as I go along. The brush marks I'm painting in could just as easily be clouds in the sky, with nothing more than a slight shift in perception. Of course, with the breaking wave in the foreground, it's important to keep lifting the spray out to avoid it getting lost within the background. It isn't until I add a distant headland that those brush marks start to make sense, and the composition feels like it's starting to come together at last.
still have a couple of tricks up my sleeve. Firstly, I'm using a sheet of sandpaper to create extra spray. You have to be careful not to damage the paper too much and it's a good idea to ease yourself into it, gradually increasing the pressure as you go along. It's good for random textures, but it is quite destructive. So if I'm going to use the technique, I would always wait until quite late on in a painting. The other thing I'm going to do is scratch out a few extra highlights along the leading edge of the rolling wave with a craft knife. All watercolours are a journey. Well, some are planned out better than others with a clear, precise, carefully orchestrated string of events. Others may fall together almost accidentally. Well, this painting came from the seed of an idea, but in the end it developed organically and didn't turn out at all to be anything like the painting that I initially envisaged. Well, it may lack finesse, but I'm reasonably satisfied with the final outcome. One thing is for sure, I had fun painting it. <laughs>